Okay. I went ahead and dipped my glasses. Straight back there, like this. And uh, dip this. And I ought to go over there and turn off the radio. Judy will do that. I'll stay in one position here. Just turn this thing around slowly. So we all can see. See, his head's kind of wobbly right now, but that'll be taken care of. I burned everything except the facial features right here in the center because uh, you've seen me do all this stuff before, but I thought I'd just include that there. But first, let me uh, answer a question. Someone asked me how I lock my blades in my knife, and I'll show you here real quick. This is the best knife handle that I've found out there. I think I can't remember exactly where I got this thing. It might have been given to me. Well, okay, I always put a... Well, first let me go, go over this. I use some of this uh, moldable epoxy. You can buy this down at the lumber yard. It's just a two-part thing. You just cut off a length and then work it back and forth between your fingers until it gets good and mixed up. I forced it down in there. Then I uh, laid a piece of uh, well, handy wrap over it so my blade wouldn't stick to it. And then I went and I put my blade in there and forced it down in there so it creates kind of a ridge. See there? It's got that ridge on it right there that holds your blade. But uh, this, this particular handle comes with two little notches there not notches, but protrusions, to hold your blade. I went and ground that back one off, which uh, <coughs> allows me to move that blade forward one notch and extend it out farther than it normally would be. That seems to give me just a little bit, a little bit more cutting area. Okay, when I put my knife blade in the, in the handle, what I do is I just uh, put some masking tape over the back edge of the blade like that. That'll protect it enough to where it's not going to screw it up when you're ready to turn, turn the blade around. Okay? Just a little tip there. I hope it answered that question. You can still use that epoxy to anchor your blade a little better in these handles that uh, you know don't have that ex uh, uh, second little thing sticking out there. So, getting back to this guy here, I'm going to burn him. So anyway, let's take him apart. He's looking real good. I went ahead and made me varnish my base here and. Uh, so that's all finished. So we're just one step ahead, away rather, of painting this guy. As soon as I get this off of here, put my cigarette away so I don't lose it. Okay, getting over here to my burning tool. Covered with dust because I haven't been using it much. Alright, I use a burn master and I got a little detailer here I bought off of a wood carver who passed away. Didn't buy it off of him, I bought it off his wife. She came down with wood carving <coughs> one day and, oops, don't want to turn that on yet. And was uh, getting rid of his tools. Before I burn, I want to make sure my uh, tool sharp. So <coughs> I got me a little uh, sharpening station here to hold my diamond stones. I've got a sort of a medium one here and a fine one and that's all I need really for my sharpening. So I'll put, I don't want to use that one, put the fine one in here. Make sure that tip's cooled off. And just kind of burnish, sharpen that edge just a little bit. Shine right across 
across the tip, just like that. Get my strop here and get rid of that burr that's on there. sparkle there. The end get right any other residue that's on it. Alright. Test it down here. Doing the detail on the neck, I don't want it to be real hot. That's about right. So just start in there and being real careful. When I burn these details around the eyes, I don't want them to be real dark. I just want them to just sort of bleed out from the edges there, like right there and over here. That's all you need. You don't need a real heavy black line. That'll just detract from your carving. And you don't want a hot tool. things like that right there where you scorch too much on your wood. I'll have to come back and burn that off of there. Or carve that off of there. I had my stocking hat on, but Judy said, you really want to wear that stocking hat again? I said, no, I don't want to, don't want to get jumped on. So I changed it. So now I'll go back and get rid of these heavy burn lines. Paint would cover this up, but uh, I'll go ahead and cut them off of there, especially that one. Like this one here, right there. Paint will cover that one so I can worry about it. So, that's it. Bring it back to the other here. Looks pretty good. Take it back apart. Now, the next thing to do before we paint it is uh, get all this stuff off of here. First, I gotta get this thing out of there. Once I super glue that in there, it is not ever going to come out. I dimpled my little bead here, you can see, so it'll be even across there, and paint will cover that. So that will be sort of like the secret key to hold this little half strap. So. Okay, now we're going to go over to the flap sander and clean this fella up. Oh, we got one thing. The most important thing of all. And that's to sign this card.
tell I've got this down to a science. talking about and a little copyright symbol Another thing besides uh, making your carving look a lot softer than it is here, it looks kind of uh, sharp, but we're going to kill all that sharpness. It also, this little flap sander here, cleans up your carving. See all the dirt that's uh, gathered on the ridges here of your, of your piece? Well, this little flap sander will take that off, because generally, down in the center of this, away from that ridge, it's clean. So we don't need to really clean that area down in there. We just need to clean those areas. Some people wash their carvings with soap and stuff. I just wouldn't do that. So here we go. I learned when you're sanding, always sand away from the edge like that. Don't sand down like that or this thing will jerk it right out of your hand. Now, uh, see how, we, how nice and clean that is right there, to where it used to be dirty? put my thumb over his nose because that's the most sensitive area when you're uh, sanding with this thing so I just protect that and do it at the very last. And again on your ears and things like that, sand this way first and then turn around and sound that way. And it doesn't hurt to put your finger on that. It's not going to hurt your finger to stick it in there but it'll certainly protect I can feel a grab right there.
Clean now. Daddy's weekly bath. So I only have to do the hat. See how much time I got. I got a little time, I think. Okay, these things are the handiest gadgets I think I've got in my shop because I just use them constantly for everything. Uh, as they're used, the little fingers of the sandpaper will wear off, you know, break off. Just like that one there. You just unscrew this thing here, you rotate it once, turn it on. And then it shoots out another stream and you just snip that off and you're good to go again. And you can buy replacement brushes and uh, everything for them. Get you an old motor out of a washing machine or something like that. And uh, you know this thing will go right on there and I'll tell you they're neat. These are metal because I bought them a long, long time ago back in the 70s. So uh, I think the ones they make nowadays are plastic. So it's an and find one, the metal one, and pick her up. Okay, so he's done. Next time, next uh, video is going to be uh, putting some paint on him. So until then, I'll talk to you later.